You know, Paul was really rubbing it in my face this week about y'all having Eastern what? time zone just being ahead of stuff. Yeah, you were just like, yeah, that's cool. I get, we get all the TV shows three hours early. Oh, that's like, true. I, I know what's happening before you do, Chad. And I was like, Paul, we're in a streaming world now where we don't really watch things based on right. cable stream. And you're like, no, that's not, that's not, that's going away. Netflix is only going to be around for another year. Eastern time zone, baby. You don't know about the secret shows that the East Coast gets first and then you guys get the... <laughs> You guys get the the secondary edits with all the fun jokes taken out of them. Oh my god! Yeah, the censors get in there, and then by the time it gets to the West Coast, mm-hmm. even though we made it, like mm-hmm. it gets cut out. Oh, standards and practices gets their hands all over it before it gets to you. Wait, so Chad, when I'm watching the Ted Lasso premiere at midnight, do you just get to watch it at nine? Yeah. Fuck off! That's crazy. So you get it ahead of time. I'm pretty sure that that's a because the last time I remembered having to know when like it went live was during game of thrones remember when game of thrones was the thing yep like, so you just watched it at 9 p.m like a grandpa you don't have to stay up no, late i'm sorry like a, i i'm the grandpa because <laughs> i got to watch it with dinner <laughs> yeah so you got game of thrones at six o'clock or wait yes i'm trying to think about yeah or whatever time it would come out if it was midnight eastern yeah you usually come out like yeah you can yeah, like, it like nine o'clock game of thrones would come Ten. out nine o'clock eastern so you guys got it at six o'clock you got it at dinner time you could make your dinner and then sit sure. down wow well also i mean the last couple of seasons of game of thrones there was those watch parties where you had to wait an extra hour and a half for everyone to fucking get there mm-hmm. like everyone mm-hmm. just running late like what are we all doing we're wasting an entire night i just mm-hmm. need to watch this half hour of a mediocre show now at this point (laughs) here's the thing you were complaining that the east coast was getting preferential treatment but it sounds like everything's just slipping into the west coast wheelhouse (laughs) (laughs) well how about this you have the stock market right you're closer to the trade center oh Oh, yeah yeah paul and i both benefit greatly from that (laughs) (laughs) you know i get my sales on in the morning you need that extra half microsecond to get your trades in. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I I think that's that's still one of the most wild things about how right right we know like the banks and like mutual fund companies want to be as close as possible physically to the exchange for their cape for the less amount of like fiber. Oh really? Is that, that truly to... like what happened? I didn't know anything about this. Yeah, I mean maybe maybe everything is all so high speed at this point it doesn't matter anymore but at least it used to be a thing of like that's why it was oh, why yeah. you don't have like a trader company in the middle of like ohio speed of light baby yeah it's a crazy system yeah we should take down the stock market yeah <laughs> hey i found out california has their own pizza chad can you tell me about that? Whoa, 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 whoa. what <laughs> You mean the one, the ones that are California Pizza Kitchen? And I, I mean, I know your burritos have French fries in them. This I know. Yeah, is that not a thing? You, you don't have? That's not a thing. That is uh, intensely not a I've thing. I've had, I've had some fries put into a burrito. You've never had that. I've had fries well, put into a sandwich. But it, uh, I mean, fries, fries in a sandwich. That's that's holy. Yes. That's, that's... I mean, I feel like if I'm going to get fries in my burrito out here, I'm going to a food truck where not only is it fries, it'll be like a it'll be like a California burrito. It's fries and then like pastrami and avocado. Hmm. I had a Whoa. delicious burrito when I was out there. A breakfast burrito that had uh, handmade uh, hash browns in it, which was incredible. Ooh. Oh, that's so yeah. Good. So what's this pizza? What's this pizza? Yeah. You're what's, yeah, out what's, there, yeah what's this pizza I, situation? I, I heard there's like kind of a unique California pizza style, and I love my regional pizza styles. Oh, I first thought you were just goofing. As far as I'm aware of, the only California pizza thing is complaining that you can't get good pizza in California. Really? All right, I need you to go out and do and do regional California oh, pizza I'll research. Eat some, then I'll eat some pizzas for you. <laughs> yeah, Kevin. do some. Um, pizza. Well, the problem is like we need to tap you into the underground market. There's like a Fight Club of pizza going on, and I don't know how we're going to get you into that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't want like you, you, you're gonna get like the base level california pizza styles but we need to get into the underground pizza styles like uh like deep dish used to be before it was exposed that is that is from the underground for sure right mm-hmm. wait okay i mean i actually i can i can eat a deep dish every once in a while i love oh, oh, I, I love, love yeah. deep dish oh it's a God. different thing though like i am if someone said let's order pizza Mm-hmm. Right. He said, great. And then a deep dish showed up. I'm like, that is not what we agreed upon. Right. It, it, a pizza pie is truly a deep dish. That's a pizza pie. You know what I mean? Like when someone mm-hmm. calls a big like bowl a bowl of sauce is different than what we talked about getting. Right. Exactly. Like if someone says, ha- like, have a pizza pie, 
and to give me like a regular like New York slice, that is not a pizza pie. That is a pizza. <laughs> But sure, a, but yeah. a but a a true pizza pie is a deep that that's a fucking pie dish that you're being given. Yeah, you're also adding like an extra hour and a half to your like wait time. For that's that true. Pizza. That's true. But like like remember when you found out about deep dish pizza mm-hmm. and yeah. you're like this is, can barely be called pizza, but I accept it into my heart begrudgingly. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. Not that it isn't good. Again, it's delicious. It's a different thing. It's a different thing. Mm-hmm. I'm saying, like, is California, is the true California pizza, like, a sphere? Is it even, like, crazier? (laughs) When you say a sphere, I don't know if this is what you mean, Kevin. I'm picturing a calzone that is a a full sphere, crust on the outside. Yes. like Like a Destiny the Traveler egg. There is just... It is a against all laws of physics floating orb of pizza. It hovers a foot off of whatever surface you put it on. <laughs> it's like it's like how can you call that pizza? It doesn't even respond to the physics of our realm. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. It, it it breaks what we understand about relativity. Um, I don't know if this counts as pizza. There's not there's not like a definitive. I don't. I, I listen. I fucking love pizza, and I think I came from a Midwest place that had. I grew up in embarrassment of riches of pizza. There's right. No. It's fine out here. It's like a it's like a hacky LA thing to complain about pizza, but there's no like the weird part of LA is there's no definitive like pizza presence because mm-hmm. it's all chains, right? And then cause likewise, somehow like uh, Chinese food just doesn't exist out here. Hmm. Like it's all it's all Korean food and Japanese food in terms of like Asian Asian influence. Which I'm not complaining; it's delicious, but there's just right. no like Chinese food places. Yeah, you get those in the suburbs of Massachusetts, but like since I moved to Boston, it is all uh, Korean places and Thai places, which again, I oh, fucking yeah, love. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh my god, we got a great Thai place near us. Oh yeah, you sent us the the uh, link to that place. That place sounded awesome. Uh, oh yeah, man. Thai is having it is having a new moment. I feel like there's some really good Thai places that popped up in Philly too. Uh, yeah, I, I I lived out here in in little Thai town for the first six or seven years, and just just lived off of Pad Thai and Pad CU. Oh, oh my, my god! Oh my goodness! I have I have an unrelated question to this. Oh sure, before. please. And not to not to pivot too far off of regional foods. Um, mm. do you think when the Pope got his copy of Undertale? <laughs> uh huh. Uh-huh, go on. <laughs> when, when Matt when Matt Pat from Game Theory gave him Undertale, and he's like, "This is this is Undertale." There, mm-hmm. You should check out my YouTube videos about it. And then the mm-hmm. Pope was like, "Oh, thank you." Do you think he took? Do you think he took it back to his house and then did a full genocide run? <laughs> just not even thinking about it, just murdered <laughs> everyone. <laughs> and then someone was like, "Oh, interesting. You chose genocide." He's like, "What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> I beat the game. I killed the monsters. What are you talking about?" <laughs> now, I do believe he did that because the Pope is too cool to not be evil. <laughs> Wait, okay, hold on. Just Unpack that, please. <laughs> he is he is so cool. He must be evil. I mean, think about it. He wears that sexy robe. He's got uh-huh. that like <laughs> yeah. badass uh-huh. hat, the cool car. Like, you know that dude's evil. <laughs> but the last Pope was genuinely evil because he was Salazar from Resident Evil 4. <laughs> Are you telling me this guy was like an even cooler? Well, the evil? the last pope definitely had a tapeworm monster living inside of him for sure. <laughs> uh-huh. uh-huh. And he was always just running around like hallways and hidden sli- sliding doors going, "Mr. Kennedy." He was yeah. Always doing yes, that. Yes, yeah. And he's wearing that Napoleon hat sometimes. I, I never know, got that. It was really <laughs> obvious that it was Salazar. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the the card thing is what really you're right. I mean, if you're if you have a a, a mobile you're definitely yeah. evil, without a doubt. Oh, for sure. Batman's evil. He's rich. Yeah, he's a vigilante. Did you know that, the, <laughs> did you know that likewise, like Batman, did you know that the Pope can hit you with the Pope Mobile and it's not a crime? Yeah. Why? But is it a sin? What? Is, uh, well, <laughs> intention. It's all about intention, <laughs> Kevin. Was well, he, the, Pope has, ha, the Pope has immunity from all crimes, I, I believe. So I, I think I think in the in the district of Pope Sylvania where he lives or whatever it's called the Vatican I guess is its proper name. Right. If you're in the Vatican, the Pope can do whatever he wants. He can just kill you, and no one can stop him. Well, he's got he's got infinite gold. So yes, <laughs> he's just running cheats in his own little uh, <laughs> his own little server. <laughs> 
he's he's typing in like Dino Farm cheats, just like <laughs> <laughs> like I, I'm saying when Matt Pat gave the Pope Undertale, he threw it in the fucking trash and booted up his Minecraft server and started griefing other people. <laughs> <on>. <laughs> Can't, can't, the server is is officially in the Vatican. You can't <laughs> you can't say no. I and, got God mode on. And then evil Pope evil Pope popped into the server in his fucking Salazar skin, and everyone was like, <laughs> "I knew it! I fucking knew it!" Yeah, those are my opinions on the Pope. Kevin, I just need to ask. Sure. Because you talked about a California pizza, and apparently you've heard some hearsay about this California pizza. What is the style? I, I hear I hear that there is a pizza movement in California that resides on a sourdough <laughs> crust. Mm-hmm. Uh, two, maybe a white pizza. This is just a scuttlebutt. I don't think, I'm not saying every California pizza is a white pizza, sure, but of I course, hear they do a lot of white pizza. Mm-hmm. Wait, mm-hmm. are you talking about, like racially white? No, no you don't know, like, you know uh... what white pizza is. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> like, no. K- Chad, you know, like, are you unaware about white pizza? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, like white che- white sauce, like Alfredo. No, when you like, well, I mean, apparently you are. It's, it's where you have the the ricotta. It's a ricotta base. Oh, I don't think we do that. <gasps> well, jeez, wow. I've oh, been geez. misinformed. Oh, I could be wrong. I mean, that sounds delicious. Just uh, I- I've had that pizza before. Okay, good. But... Okay, good. Oh my god, I thought you didn't have it. I got really scared. <laughs> I got really, I got a little worried. You haven't had your life. I, well, I, I got scared, but I also got excited because I could have shown you it for the first time. Yeah, uh, I hear, I hear it's served in a half moon shape. I hear they use pine needles instead of rosemary. What um, the I don't fuck know, is I don't this? know if any of this is real, Kevin. <laughs> this sounds like witch's pizza, and I love it. <laughs> Who told you these things about California? You can only get this pizza under a crescent moon in the middle of yeah. a grove in the forest. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to, like, you know, a dude in the alleyway, and he told me all this stuff about California pizza, and I thought I'd double-check it with Chad. Pete, California pizza, I would say, is a general shady business. <laughs> uh, one of my one of my favorite places to get pizza in L.A. for a couple of years was the craziest hookup. Hook it, was, it was a deep dish, like, on Postmates that was really, really good, and somehow didn't take five hours to make. Mm-hmm. And you could have it delivered... It was called like it was called like California deep dish. Yeah. Um. And at one point, I was like, you know, I, I just want to go and like the, the pizza started getting inconsistent. I was like, I want to I want to go to where and pick one up. I'm just gonna save some money on delivery fees. Yeah. And so I, I look up their address and I I drive to it and it is like downtown mm-hmm. in a like a closed down office block with no lights or anything on. Mm-hmm. And I discovered that the building that they are located at has no windows, a door that you can't open. What the fuck? And no signage. And, it, and you have to call. You have to call them. And then and then a, they'll be like, oh yeah, drive around the corner and park down park down the street. We'll bring it out to you. This sounds precisely like the pizza Kevin is talking yeah, about. Yeah, like, is, how is this any stranger than pine needles on pizza? <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe there were. It was just been like a man who was not wearing a uniform would like run out to your car in darkness and hand it to you. And I was like, "Is there no? Is there not a real restaurant? Are you guys just like making it in a garage?" It was, Yo, it was completely shady, and I loved th- it. Those are like the what are what are they? Um, uh, they're like the ghost restaurants or whatever. Yes, like, yeah, that's, oh. the hot, that's all the hotness right now. Yeah. The ghost kitchen. The ghost kitchen or the ones that are a corporation trying to hide that are a corporation. You guys know about that? Like, um, mm-hmm. there's one on Postmates for a while you could find, I'm not trying to get Postmates, any any delivery apps. Mm-hmm. You would see listings like, uh, I think it was called like Pasquale's, Pascal's Pizza. Uh-huh. Mm. And it's just Chuck E. Cheese pizza. <laughs> But Chuck E. Cheese is selling it under a different name. Right. Because Pascal's one of the animals. Yeah, they rebrand. Oh my to, God, to Pascal's. Get you to like buy it. Like, well, you know, whatever. It's a local shop called Pascal's, but you're buying just old Chuck E. Cheese pizza. Yeah, like uh, I remember when um, in, in the early days of COVID, uh, Chuck E. Cheese was thrown into an even deeper spiral. That it currently <laughs> resides in, and like there were all those uh, there are all those pictures of like Chuck E. Cheeses with like uh, spray paint on the outside or on the windows or like che- Chez Pizza five dollars. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> please, please, please come buy some pizza from us. Yeah, that's the it's the one thing we could give you. <laughs> we cannot give you joy, but we can give you suboptimal pizza. <laughs> <laughs>
You know what? Just so, just for the authentic experience, we put a little game token in there in the cheese for you, just so you can feel like you're there. <laughs> just like mashed into the center, like a pepperoni. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> if you bring it back to the closed down store that we reside in currently, we will give you three Tootsie Rolls for it. Welcome to Goosebuds. Welcome to Goosebuds. Hello. I'm Chad. I'm Paul. I'm Kevin. And uh, if for some reason this is your first episode, welcome. Uh, we cover Goosebump books. Yeah. And, and other things. And the weird thing yeah. is you would be here looking for the regular Goosebumps books, but we're not in the Goosebumps books anymore. We're past the Goosebumps books. We're in the Goosebumps 2000. I think that we got our hopes up, guys, about the Goosebumps 2000. <laughs> Oh, did wait. Hold on. Let me just call out. What was our hopes for Goosebumps 2000? We read the first Goosebumps 2000. Try the cat. Yeah. Try the yeah. cat. And we said, hey, this one wasn't bad, guys. And then <laughs> I, 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 I'll have some uh, some notes on this one further in. But I do I do have to say, I think we fell right back into the. It was almost like we were in like a relationship that we broke up. <laughs> And then, and then, like they came, they were like, "I've changed everything." I've changed. Uh, I'll never do this shit to you ever again. I'll never do this shit to you again. And then, the, <laughs> let's have a baby. We got comfortable, and we we got married to the bride of the living dummy, and and then things got comfortable again. Bride of oh. the living dummy is our book this uh, time, and it's a slappy. It's a slappy episode. It's, it's, a, it's slap. my first slappy episode. <gasps> this is this it? somehow your first slappy? Well, I mean, we've done the movies where Slappy appears, but right. this is my yeah, first Slappy yeah. book. Wow. Yeah, so this is the fourth. Somehow this is somehow only the fourth in. I get. I guess that makes sense. There was three in the first Goosebumps line. This is yeah. definitely the fourth. Right. There's the original uh, trail. Mm -hmm. In Goosebumps 2000. I believe we have Son of Slappy to look forward to. Oh, after good. This. I can't wait to find out how Slappy fucked. <laughs> <laughs> God, he's so creepy. I, I do want to comment that, like, this does seem to be some sort of evolution of Goosebumps, because... It, there is something different. There's something different about it, right? Yeah, there is something different about it. Like, maybe he got an editor or, or something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Finally, this time, I'll let you make some notes on my manuscript. <laughs> he's, he's not just, like, whipping these off stream of conscious style. Um, like, I agree the plot and the pacing are still, like... 90s goosebumps as fuck yeah like this one waited until the third act to really do anything right like yeah typical, like a, almost like a typical I, yeah. goosebumps book i feel like the characters are in slightly sharper focus though i i would agree with that yeah uh, i don't know the writing felt a little more purposeful even if the purpose was to just waste your fucking time <laughs> i mean it's just yeah the thing is yeah it's like plotting itself along until mm -hmm. you get to the real spooky stuff, which is what we've always complained about are the worst Goosebumps books, is when the, when the true scares are replaced by pranks for half, for more than half of the book, <laughs> then uh -huh. it, that's when things become frustrating. And this was one where I feel like a lot of it was just prank. There were some, quote-unquote, horror things happening, but not much. Yeah. It was really mostly pranks. I, I guess... Yeah, so I, it, the one thing I I thought I felt, and we need more data for this comparison between Goosebumps 2000 and the other yeah, ones, yeah. was there wasn't really a scary moment unless you find like a small child, a small dummy holding you saying you're going to bury me. I guess that's kind of scary. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, like uh. the earlier parts of Slappy revealing himself in the book, I was at least grateful that Slappy's just like clearly like... Listen, we've done this before. I'm just gonna start talking. <laughs> like, like that that's kind of, yes, I'm with you. <laughs> I'll no, start Chad. revealing myself sooner. Chad, I was getting really annoyed because it felt like we were just and Kevin, you haven't read one of these books, but you know, we well, you know what happens. You've edited these episodes. Like, yeah, this yeah. is like the this, what has happening is like, wow, weird things are happening, and the dummies are always sitting in the room, you know, in an odd <laughs> in an odd position, <laughs> and like, it's like, don't don't fucking dummy edge me this whole time i know what's going on <laughs> but it couldn't be the dummies alive or could or it could it yeah i guess like this whole time the the character has to be like behind the audience because mm -hmm. and unless you this is your first goosebump book and you've never heard of slappy maybe you're like well this is just a random ventriloquist doll but like mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, I guess even as soon as Slappy starts talking, by the third way through the book, you know that this dummy is alive and is hitting his owner. Right. And But then, like, the author's still, the character's still figuring it out for a bit. 
Right. When when do we get a book from Slappy's perspective where he's like Apparently. every day the same shit? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking like Rorschach's journal, like yeah. November fifteenth, uh-huh. dead dog at the side of the highway. I did it. <laughs> Every day I wake up, someone says the words. <laughs> then I slap them every day. <laughs> uh, I, I th- apparently, from what I was reading ahead, that like the Goosebump Slappy World series that is the current one, right? Mm-hmm. Even though it's not always Slappy, Slappy is like the Crypt Keeper. Oh, that's fun. Uh, okay. That's fun. Where he's like narrating, or t- or apparently like injecting alludes which is probably clearly just like rl's board like yeah what if slappy said some stuff here right <laughs> like, right kind of right i hear uh he gets to say fuck once per book as well, <laughs> <laughs> well i i do want to say this about so we'll start out let's let's lay a little groundwork here this one opens up yeah. with a hundred names being said and it's confusing as hell <laughs> yeah because oh man it's it's Oh my god, I can't even get all the names out. There's Jillian, and then she's feeding Petey, and then Katie shows up, and then Amanda shows up, and then Mary Ellen shows up. Mary Ellen's got two names, it's too many names. There's too many names, there's so many names hitting me. (laughs) Mary, so uh, Jillian's her main character. Right. Uh, Petey is her pet lizard. I don't know if you say what species it is. You know, a lizard. A lizard that could fit inside a doll's mouth, we know that. Okay. Um... (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Gives us a little bit of metrics to follow. For the incoming vor, we needed to know that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Light vor in this one. Oh, yeah. Slappy vor is a lizard in this. That's right. Um, uh, we got Harrison, who shows up later, who's well, described as very big. Yes. Oh, Harrison is constantly just a unit. eating food or described as big. But also, the first time Harrison was called out, he gives his full name, and it makes it feel... Her- I... I, I, I the first mention of I called out was I fell asleep around 1130. I dreamed about my friend Harrison Cohen. I dreamed that he and I could fly. We were flying all over the school. And all of our friends were amazed. Mm-hmm. I looked it up because like, oh, this must be like a tie in to, I, I, you know, uh, the flying. I book. thought, yeah, I, when I learned how to fly, is it? I learned how to fly. Yeah. Or how I learned to fly. Sorry. How I, how I learned yeah. to fly. Like, and I looked up and like, nope, it's just, he's just a character in this book, but it was weird that he was name checked like a reference to something else. I do think that was a subtle reference to that book, though. You think so? I'm t- I'm reading it as such. That's what I choose sure. to believe. It makes the book smarter to be referenced Agreed. to that. Before we get into like the actual plot of this, mm-hmm. we have to talk about the book cover. Oh, yes. Okay. Sure. Sure. There's two different ones. Which one are you referring to? I'm talking about the one with the white logo. So the two, the 2018 one with the uh, from the low angle shot of the two pup the two pup. Oh, I right, thought that pup. looked a lot like movie slappy. So that was like definitely movie slappy. Yep. On the... uh, it says now a major motion picture above it too. Oh, yeah, that was wow. re re. Apparently, that was re released in a classic Goosebumps print uh, around the time of the movie. Yes. What is uh What does the original look like? The original releasing is more of the classic depiction of Slappy. Slappy's looking a little bit like Abraham Lincoln with his top hat and. His weird pilgrim suit. Mm-hmm. And then the bride looks like the the bride of Chucky. Well, not only bride of Chucky, but Frankenstein's bride doing the the, the black and white striped hair, which right. at some point is like, right. well, maybe do something different, guys. Uh, but, but also you got the troll doll thing going on with uh, with Mary sure. Ellen over there. Uh, also in the original, the 1998 cover, uh, if you pay attention to Slappy's raised leg and foot, uh, Slappy is mounting the cake. Oh, yeah. Is. Slappy is is fucking. That, yeah, that's why they, you see that little that little cutaway hole already. That's what Slappy's been. <laughs> yeah, he is fully incorporated into that cake. He yeah. is enraptured with that cake. Uh, I think I actually like the design of the bride more in the new cover. I like her for she has a little bit more of a unique look. Yeah, she's a little creepier. Um, she kind of reminds me of like a doll from that. Uh, what was that one short animation that uh, Guillermo did? I, I, he might, I think he didn't direct it, but I think he produced it. It was with the toy oh, shop. The, gir- the girl who gets toy- turned into the toy. She's like, oh, Al- Alma. You're talking about Alma. Alma. Alma yes. That was uh, done by my former coworker uh, Rodrigo Blas. It's yeah, great. he's fantastic. It's a great short. Alma. It's a great yeah. short. Kind of reminds me of that creepiness, that kind of like vibe of of toy. I do want to clarify. Totally. I did say that the the twenty or the 1998 one did look like the Bride of Chucky. She looks nothing like the Bride of Chucky. I looked her back up. Nothing like her. I was completely wrong. And 100% is the Bride of Frankenstein. But for some reason, I thought the Bride of Chucky was based off of that. And I guess I was Bri- wrong. Bride of Chucky, I'm sure, was also an influence. I'm glad it's not because, y'all, I remember Bride of Chucky. Didn't see the movies. Remember the promotions going like, this is too sexy of a, of a Chucky doll. Not for me. Too much. 
too much. I do not want to be aroused. I can't go to see this. The whole Bride of Frankenstein thing is kind of wild in that it is a part of the Frankenstein book. Because, like, the monster comes back and he's like, hey, can you make me, like, a honey, a wife? Yeah. <laughs> and the doctor almost goes through with it. Then he doesn't. And then the, the monster gets real mad. Because he's horny. But then it becomes, like, a, such an iconic part of horror movies right where they actually what if frankenstein did make it well it's such a it's such a fucking sequel ass idea of hey you know that thing we explicitly didn't do that was a big part of the text of the first one (laughs) (laughs) now i'm not saying we're out of ideas but what if we did the thing (laughs) what if we undid everything good about the thing that we did (laughs) because yeah i mean i I, it's been a long time since i've read the book i recall how you're describing it kevin it's kind of tragic and sad because it's not like, oh, Frankenstein's monster just wants to get down. It's yeah. he's like alone and just looking for another. And yes, sure, it is a a, a man needs a woman kind of type idea. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, like he doesn't want to be alone. If, I, I don't remember it perfectly either. Uh, but if memory serves correctly, they're in a California pizza shop. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Lit by the, the glowing orb of the pizza ball. Yeah. Part of the, yeah, yeah. Which they can't eat. Uh, so, Brian of the Living Dummy, uh, we have we have Jillian, mm-hmm. whose one goal in life, other than to not be menaced by her twin sisters and their extremely creepy doll. It's, is it, she, it, he's like, oh, like, I get what RL's doing here. Twins, yeah. creepy. Evil doll, creepy. Put them all together. Super creep. Starts out on extreme creep vibes. Yep, yep, but but also kind of creepy is all J- Jillian's one trait, her yeah. one kid trait like, is she wants to be a clown. What the I fuck know. is can with we talk that? About that? What is can we with talk that? about that career goal? No kid wants to be a clown. <laughs> <laughs> not a li- no kid, and not even like and like magician or anything else. She doesn't want to be any of those. I think clown over everything. Well, there's a, there's a there's an insight into <laughs> into her her fantasy she has that I screenshotted because uh, I needed to talk about. <laughs> oh, it, okay, go ahead. Where her and i think harrison are she's roped harrison into being a clown right mm-hmm. um and uh, listen i'm sure he's i'm sure he's really fun seeing that kid mm-hmm. funny in makeup uh and they're getting ready for this kid's party and julian has this thought maybe we'll be good i thought maybe yes. this party is just the start maybe we'll become the most popular birthday party clowns in town <laughs> maybe we'll become rich birthday party clowns <laughs> i was like that's never been a thing <laughs> Uh, Jillian, point me to the rich clowns that you're at, <laughs> yeah, that you're please, idolizing. Point. <laughs> I mean, she obviously took a clown business class because they're <laughs> making thirty dollars per engagement, and they're spending like how much on all these clown pr- tricks at the store? <laughs> like the margins can't be good for them. She went to the ITT Tech of clown schools. That's what she <laughs> went to, and they roped her in fully. <laughs> and we'll also like a. Mo- I've been watching a lot of shows about multi-level marketing schemes. Like a good pyramid scheme, you gotta rope in your friends and family into yes. also being clowns. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you sell them. You sell them the makeup and the kit and the inflatable chicken, and you're like, now go do more shows <laughs> and go find more clowns. I'm I'm sure RL was just like, what's a dumb shit thing kids want to be? I don't know, a fucking clown. Uh. But this is actually, like, this could have been a cool thing to explore with her character uh-huh. because she obviously doesn't like her twin sisters very much, yet she feels this desire to entertain children right, professionally. Right. So, like, what's that about? Like, does, like, the fire of her soul burn in a clown-shaped flame? Like, what what's going on? We <laughs> right. just don't know. She just kind of wants to be one. Mm-hmm. Wasn't her previous, if I remember right, in one of the books, I'm going to guess the second one of the Libby Dummy... I thought the kid wanted to be a ventriloquist. Like, yes, well, that and that and that alert, and that was like, oh, that's why he was drawn to Slappy and trying to do bits with him. Right, there was always kind of bit. There was always kind of based around that. Like, the kids wanted to be a stand-up comedian or whatever, you know. Like, they wanted to do like they wanted to have a stage bit, and like she's uh-huh. kind of she's kind of bucking that. Yeah, I, yeah, I don't understand. I don't understand the clown thing, but I also don't understand like where are these kids finding all these ventriloquist dummies? Do you, you guys? As, <laughs> As as nineties kids, and this is taking place in the nineties. Did you guys ever yeah. in your life encounter Constantly. a single Constantly. A single? You did. Okay, uh, maybe we weren't in the antiquing capital of the world like you were. So yeah. that's why we Every didn't. Once in a while, yeah. yeah. Antiquing and haunting capital of yes, the world. Yes, you're right. So, like, you're right. I had to wade through possessed dummies <laughs> to get to school in the morning. 
The the part that I related to was, I mean, this was like a school function in the book, but Jillian, maybe not a school function, Jillian and Harrison have to take their sister, her twin sisters and Marianne. Not a school function. Definitely. A, 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 yeah, that was definitely like a like a fly by night operation where they were entertaining but there's children. Like hundreds of kids at this show. Yeah, like this is a popular. It's event. a it's a Pied Piper thing going on here for sure. Sure, sure. Uh, that felt a little bit like I remember having to go to puppet shows during school that were like, and here is an yes. educational acting out of Genghis Khan or something. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah, there's a there's a legit show going on that that they have to go to. And uh for some reason Jillian has to take her her sisters. And we get the to the main crux of what this book is about. And it is about being a performer and failing in front of everybody else constantly. That, that is, like, is the horror. That's that is the, the horror, horror of this, of this one. Sure. Because it's constantly the true horrors that happen until the real horror at the end, the final third act horror. The, all, the main horrors we see are people fucking bombing on stage. <laughs> 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 yeah, I was like, why is this book making me so uncomfortable? Oh, it's because it's all about bombing on stage. Mm-hmm. It, I, I, it's funny. It's, I, I didn't pick up the bombing thing. I guess it's totally, it totally does because the it ends with that show. But the first one, like, um, the most interesting part of me, the book was Jimmy Two Shoes, whatever his name is. Jimmy, uh, Jimmy, oh, O'James. Jimmy O James, Jimmy O James, Jimmy O James, aka Jimmy Two James. Is, or <laughs> Jimmy Two Jims is uh is is putting on a show with Slappy on the stage. Yeah, and right, exactly. This is like the main event they go to, yeah. and the and the twins have to, to bring this doll along everywhere. I guess to I guess to set up the meet cute of, right. <laughs> of Mary right. Mary Ellen and Slappy. Right. Uh, and like the show is crushing it with just really mean jo- like. All of the jokes are like Jimmy going like, oh, Slappy, well, you and I are very close. And like, oh, why don't you kiss me? Oh, because I'll get termites. Mm-hmm. And, and the, kids, the kids love it. Harrison thinks it's fucking hilarious. Yep. And then Slappy just gets mean. Yep. And mostly just insults like people's breath. Yep. Or they look at their face. Kids love it. I'm like, this is the birth of Jim Gaffigan. <laughs> I was going to say I was getting a Triumph the Insult Comic Dog vibe. Definitely. Off of this guy. Yeah, definitely. Yep. Uh, but Harrison has a very, Harrison who's very big, very mm-hmm. big. Very big. Uh, <laughs> oh, did a, you, oh, did you notice what they called out how big Harrison is? Very big. <laughs> With three eyes in italics. Uh, Harrison who's very big uh, says it must be great to be a, a ventriloquist you can insult uh-huh. people to their face and nothing happens to you mm-hmm. i'm like harrison that is sociopath fucking behavior yeah <laughs> like harrison is a fucking sociopath well the, I, I thought also i'd save this mention of harrison's a weird guy he never complains he thinks everything is cool <laughs> i don't even know what to make of that what a fucking weirdo yeah girls like guys with a pain tolerance <laughs> yeah there, there's something about this whole show <laughs> sorry i love the, i love how that just hung in the, in i'm just i'm just i'm just sitting here like sitting with it i'm marinating with that idea right Har- Har- harrison is like harrison is a sucker for slappy stuff in a way that i wish it was explored more a- another one during the earlier show is harrison going this guy's really funny that dummy has a bad attitude yeah, i did like that bad <laughs> attitude line this is the 90s. This is what we're all thinking. This is the Bart era of America, where everyone we're having a bad <laughs> attitude was what you wanted. That was hot. That was that was desirable. This is the eat my shorts era. Yes, of it kids is. Yes, it is. Yeah. So like they they go through this whole show. Happy fucks these kids up. Fucks up the two sisters who are abusive pranksters. Uh, mm-hmm. Go up and they get their comeuppance right away, getting getting beat the fuck up by Slappy's barbs, and oh, then yeah. and then they the show ends and the and the sisters are like, we're going back, we're gonna we're, ha- we're gonna have, we're gonna have words with Slappy, <laughs> we we gotta we, <laughs> we're gonna like, set upon we're them. gonna set upon <laughs> we were, we're gonna Slappy's catching these hands, and they go back uh, and disappear, and Jillian and Harrison have to go find them, so they go into this creepy little backstage area, and. Jillian finds Jimmy being reamed out by Slappy, punched by Slappy. <laughs> punched by Slappy. Slappy does a fucking like haymaker on Jimmy's face, breaks, and it's incredible. Breaks, <laughs> breaks Jimmy's nose. Breaks Jimmy's nose. She walks in. Uh, Slappy sees that he's caught, 
pr- plays dead, does a possum thing, and then yeah. Jimmy looks at her and goes, oh, he's just a dummy. He's not alive. I'm not lying. And looks at her <laughs> and like it, it tries to tries to talk his way out of it in the most convincing way possible. Uh, which Jimmy she, to James is in an abusive relationship. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And she <laughs> buys it. She just immediately is like, yeah, totally. You're right. You're not lying. And then walks out. Uh, <laughs> while reading this, I couldn't help but think about what it would be like to direct this. And mm. I think that when you watch the shows, uh, the Nickelodeon shows, that they, you know, they have to obviously take a different tack. Because I think if they try, one, they didn't have the money to do a literal one for one directing translation of the book to the TV show. No. But if you did that to this story, absolute hilarious farce would, would unfold. <laughs> like, you, the, one, Harrison and and Jillian try to walk through doors multiple times at the same time together. I was going to bring up the Three Stooges thing they do where they, they keep... try to go through doors at the same time and get stuck. Uh. I it's a Three Stooges bit and like he does these things and I'm not sure like what the tone he's going for is. Is he tr- like I get it like it's RL and RL is tr- like he's like a goofy guy. He likes to write goofy jokes like this. But I'm like I don't know if it comes across as like actual like goofy comedy or as just like I don't think he, like his descriptions really play it the way that it it, it like it, he's like kind of going for like a realistic thing. He's trying to like paint this realistic picture for you, and then he has these moments, and I'm like, do you want this to be like a slapstick farce? I guess like, am I supposed to be taking this seriously, or am I yeah. supposed to be laughing about this? And like the kids have their doll, and they bring it along, and they're like feeding it ice cream, and like, I, look, I get it. This is supposed to, again supposed to be like a kids book. We're supposed to be kind of laughing, but like. It's not like I'm not even like I'm finding it funny, but like I'm getting mad. I I know that the, I know that I'm supposed to be mad at the twins because they're so demanding and annoying, but I'm actually getting mad at Jillian for fucking giving in to them and being such a fucking pushover. Uh-huh. And I'm like Jillian. Also, the pa- well, the parents are giving in too, yes. right? There's a, there's a part where like they have dinner later and they give it its own plate of macaroni. They give it its own plate of macaroni, which is like that is wasteful. It's wasteful and I, weird. Don't do that. that- Apparently, I know they, I'm sure we've talked about this in previous episodes. Apparently they do that in like the American Girl doll store. They'll like make a f- meal for the doll that sits with you. Oh my God. I'm like, sure. I'm sure the parents like eat it later in the fridge or something. Right. Like, right. How fucking wasteful. Like a doll meal? Like a. No, I think they make <laughs> like a, a, a doll's meal. meal. <laughs> like a doll's <laughs> meal. Like I first saw that too. Like, like, oh, they put a little plastic like chicken nuggets. Like, I think they yeah. make, because they want to sell you. I think they make another hot human meal Uh and then they serve it in front of you and then what you just pretend the doll is eating it i don't listen that's a whole other thing i guess wasteful yeah i'm with you i think it's wasteful and stupid it's annoying (laughs) dolls are being fed mac and cheese while real people go hungry the mac and cheese is a plot point in this we'll then we'll get back to that (laughs) yeah mary Mary ellen remembers the mac and cheese remember she calls it out there's too much mary ellen business in this like you can you can understand that there's a doll and that she's annoying right right like like, again it's sure kevin i'm with you like that like you're supposed to be annoyed at the sisters i get it i understand that rl (laughs) but i'm not annoyed at the sisters I'm annoyed at the other characters for fucking giving in and playing into their hand of of this Mary Ellen doll. They're enabling this. There's, there's a part where Jillian goes like, oh, I'm so sick of Mary Ellen. And I was like, I am with you, Jillian. I am. Yes. The sheer amount of times I've just read her name in this book, I am sick of hearing the phrase Mary Ellen. I'm done. Mm. I'm done with Mary Ellen. Mm. So I wanted to point out just that right now that there, like, if you film this thing literally, it would be ridiculous because there are moments later in this that I was, I could not help, guys. I was reading this, and I was laughing to myself, imagining the scene playing out in the story. I will call them out as we come upon them. Yeah, are you, it was yeah. one of them picturing a tiny little dummy just slapping a grown man, like oh, absolutely, five times his height. Absolutely, yeah. yes. But there's more. There are more. There, I, well, I just want to call out the <laughs> the general thing that I was thinking about a lot in terms of the the broad thing of goosebumps. And how Slappy is the mascot of this series. Mm-hmm. He is he is definitely the iconic character. Yep. Uh, we've talked about how RL says in interviews like Slappy's his favorite character because like who else would it fucking be the hamster from Monster? <laughs> right. Like right. Slappy's his favorite character, and we know RL is a joke writer. Right. Right. Jovial <laughs> Bob Stein. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so this should be like Slappy should be the pinnacle. Of Goosebumps stories. It should be the pinnacle. And he, and I think he should be putting out his best stuff. His best jokes. But he just tells the bad jokes. And then we're supposed to be like, oh, well, he's a jerk who tells bad jokes. 
No. All, all of yes, all of the jokes in the show, like the mean, jo- we're like I'm like okay, not to quote a bad Tyler the Creator thing, but like if you're being bullied by Slappy, just walk away. Just turn <laughs> right, on the screen right. and walk away. Right. Like all of them are like, oh, what do you have in common with Niagara Falls? I don't know what Slappy. You're both drips. <laughs> wow. Wow. Really got to my soul there, Slappy. Just like really t- tormenting my soul. Really, really hyper targeted the details of that joke to me, <laughs> Slappy. But Slappy isn't the villain there. It's the crowd that makes the jokes. Uh, oh, because they, okay. Oh it's All right. the laughter oh of the God, crowd that inflicts the damage, All not right. Slappy's insults. All right. He's I'm proud. not done holding Slappy, uh, RL, and Slappy accountable. Uh, <laughs> I think this book suffers from RL's writing style, which is to start with the title first he's like well <laughs> i gotta do bride of the living dummy because mm-hmm. that's a title and i start all my books with the title he I've said he starts it. with the title i've already sold this book as bride <laughs> of the living dummy i gotta follow through <laughs> <laughs> i just i just keep thinking about like uh this should be rl's the joker Mm-hmm. Right, like <laughs> mm-hmm. sl- when when the joke bad takes on Joker aside, when he's really well written, when you like focus on whatever, like the best versions of the Joker, it is a really fun villain who has some very great like dark ideas of comedy where you're like fuck that guy, but also I get what he's doing, mm-hmm. right? And then you have the other versions where you have damaged on his head, right? And right. like this is every time we read a sloppy book, I'm like I'm ready, RL. Fucking bring it. What kind of crazy dark comedy you got up your sleeve this time? Oh, he said their faces look like tapioca pudding. Right. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh, all right. Maybe he can call someone slave again. Oh, he does that. Okay. He does. We get one slave in there here. There is one slave, yeah. At, at this point in the plot, um, I guess chronologically what happens is Jimmy O. James figures out a spell to put Slappy to sleep. Right. And then sticks right. him in a trash can. Right. Uh, and later Harrison finds him and brings him to uh, Jillian's house to be like, your dad does woodworking, right? Can he fix Slappy? Theoretically, if if Jimmy had just left him in the trash can and Harrison then found him, he would have Slappy would just come back to haunt Jimmy more, right? Like that move has been done in previous books, mm-hmm. but because Harrison intercepted the dummy. He caught. He took on the the possessive ownership. Yeah, he did. And here's the thing that I later it's revealed they go to Jimmy's house and he has a workshop. So is he making the dummies here, or do oh. we go to an? I'm so confused as to what the actual. I think Jimmy is just like a sorcerer's apprentice, almost like he's uh-huh. on the trail and he's uh-huh. like trying to like dabble in like the dark arts that the sorcerer okay. did. Okay, I would love a little bit more continuity, right? And like a little, like a little, maybe a more explanation. Like, is Mary Elizabeth was it Mary Elizabeth, or what was her name? Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen. Mary Ellen. Is she is she a creation as well? Is that what we're dealing with here? Like, is she part from the same factory? Yeah, uh, not because yeah. we don't really know what the deal. I, I guess we'll spoil that twist now. Like, Mary Ellen is alive, right? Uh, right. And a twist they've already done in a dummy book, right? Yeah. Like, did they? That the both dummies were, yeah. The, well, the that was the first or second the, one. The very first, um, yeah, the very first one. Slappy actually isn't alive until the end. Until well, isn't until repeat- the end. Right. But it was like, oh, there's definitely been at least like, oh, there's multiple dolls in play, right? And you thought it was just one. The only um, thing that this subverts, I, and I, let's just jump around a little bit, like, is that Slappy is spelled as you said, Kevin, into being mm-hmm. asleep. The only thing that this, this one subverts is that typically the kid, right, like would say the words, or I think in later ones, the kid didn't say the words, but someone else said the words, like someone found the card and said the words by accident, which is what mm-hmm. we're expecting, right? That the that the sisters are going to say the words and bring the, the puppet to, back to life, take Slappy out of his spell that he's in. Uh, but what actually does end up happening is the other evil doll wakes him up at some mm-hmm. point. So that's that's a bit that's the biggest subversion I think that this book throws at us. Yes, and also I, I I think there's a little bit I was frustrated on the wording, and maybe that's just how the characters understood things. Uh-huh. But it was almost written like it had for it had changed the lore of like Mary Ellen brought Sloppy to life herself. As if like she it wasn't he wasn't alive before. Maybe that's me just getting caught up in wording and syntax, Yeah, see, I, like, I was also confused. Uh, on multiple plot points by the end of this and i i was wondering okay so it was mary ellen the doll who brought slappy to life but only at the very end right mm-hmm. 
The I, only way I can I can logically figure it out is that Slappy is Slappy. Yes. He's it's the Slappy from the other books. Yes. Yeah. Jimmy Two Jimmy Two Shoes uh <laughs> has been working with a cursed Slappy. He had the phrase, mm-hmm. he read the Kali Ma mm-hmm. uh type incantation to put Slappy asleep. The kids were starting to read it. And, but then she got cut off, and then Mary Ellen just kind of basically restarted the process. She, yeah, Mary Ellen like, read the words. She did read those words. It, it oh, is the, it okay, is, that makes sense. Yes, it is the same slappy, and we are supposed to be... So Mary Ellen, we're jumping to the end of the reveal, has been terrorizing the two sisters this entire time. Uh, yeah. for their entire since they received her so she has been alive and terrorizing the two sisters the entire time she brought them back to life but they had to play the patsy for her and take the fall the entire time so mm-hmm. she did bring them back she brought slappy back because she wants to marry I th- there's a lot of people want to marry other people there's a whole like love triangle like an, i think that jillian's trapped in a love triangle she doesn't even know she's trapped in yeah <laughs> <laughs> no i uh, paul thank you for bringing that up there's something about uh, I I I hadn't been able to place it until you brought up the Frankenstein's monster thing. Like uh-huh. at the very least, like Kevin, how you said in the book, I I got why the monster wanted another right. It wanted a yeah. partner to not be alone. Right. Yeah. In this book, I have zero idea why Slappy suddenly has decided he needs a bride, um, nor why Mary Ellen wants to marry him, but also seems to fucking hate him. Right. Like. I don't, I don't know why anyone figures they have to, other than they know there's a title called Bride of the Living Dead. Uh, other than the, the, the Bride of the Living Dead, but also I think marriage is as bad is, is what is. <laughs> the title is the true villain here. It's what's driving all the conflict. Like somebody's got to be the bride. Right. <laughs> are they feeling, are they feeling the pressure of like, well, I'm in my thirties. Uh, my parents really want me to get, I got to move on. It. I got to, I, I got to do this. the next stage. I got to do it. I got to support that marriage economy. <laughs> I know my parents, but we just, it's partners. It's the same thing. We just didn't need to have a ceremony. No, you got to get married. Right. <laughs> got to get, right. Got to get married. Cause, the, cause they, cause when Mary Ellen says something at one, I don't know. I didn't write down exactly what she said, but she did say a line of something along the lines of like, you know, your classic, like stereotypical, like my, my idiot husband type of line. Like, you know, like one of those things uh, was, was mentioned. And I was like, ah, oh, Is that what we're doing? Is that how this is going to be? We're just Uh going to... I mean, if this was... If companionship was even a theme in this book, you could say something interesting with, like... Maybe this would be more of, like, a Fear Street level thing, but you could have, like, a a little uh, maybe romance thing with Harrison and Jillian, which I think he might have wanted to do and then backed off a little right. bit. Mm-hmm. They're they're close, like they're putting a lot of like close scenarios. So I thought there might have been like a romance thing going on there, right? But but like maybe they don't like cooperate so much, and then they see uh, Slappy and Mary Ellen ki- like fucking kill each other, and they're like, "Well, we're not that bad, <laughs> right? Right? Yeah, that could fix their relationship." But no, they just have like more of like a business partnership, right? Yeah, like that's yeah. really what's going on. Sure. And like, let's let's jump to the to the clown show. They decided clown to- show, <laughs> clown show, <laughs> so- clown show one, clown show one, clown show one. Uh, yes, show one, yeah. Uh, 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 yeah. The second one is a whole other. Yeah, it's great. The yeah. first one is great because they it's after they discover Slappy and Slappy is yeah. being, is doing some weird shit. Uh, yeah. They decide to get some some tricks, uh, and there's a great moment of unfortunate phrasing in this, where they're looking up the tricks at the store that they want to buy, and they decide to go with tricks where they squirt water at each other. To which uh, Harrison says the great phrase of, "We all, we'll do an all squirting act." Kids love <laughs> squirting acts. <laughs> they they he didn't know he, he didn't know. know he didn't know he did not know but it was a, gr- a great moment of unfortunate yeah, there should have been like there should have been like just like one drunk dad who wandered in with a beer going like oh i thought, oh, I thought something different okay never mind <laughs> <laughs> i mean we've definitely brought this up on the podcast before but like the 90s and 2000s were obsessed with like you know uh, uh slime and gack and mm-hmm. like being messy and like that has been some like sexual undertones almost Definitely, yes without a doubt and we get we get somewhere with that later in the second the second clown show in the- oh, are you saying that this are you saying the squirt show in clown show one um is is a, for, a precursor a foreshadowing 
of liquids to come. Maybe, maybe I'm more just I more thought the phrasing was really funny. God, there is an amazing bookend line in the two clown shows. Uh, like their their show goes really bad. Their jokes suck, and the and kids it, hate them. And it, and again, I want to pull out a couple scenes. Uh, yep. Real quick, that I that I've directed. One, they pull a knife out, a real knife yes. in their seat, <laughs> and the mom screams at them to put the knife away, and a kid cowers in the corner and cries. Butcher and- knife clown. What's funny? Because like they're gonna do a card game, and yeah. Harrison says, "I'll cut the deck," and pulls out a real ass fucking butcher knife. <laughs> And, and, the mo- and the mom yells at him. It's as hilarious. all clowns eventually become killers. Yes. Like, uh, this is this is uncool. Like, don't you know Timmy's parents were killed by a butcher knife clown <laughs> earlier this year? <laughs> Oh, it's fucking incredible. It's an incredible and then, moment. And then and then they do the the joke of the whipped cream and two kids get hit in the face and they run around screaming, Ow, it burns. My eyes they burn. It's I burning my eyes. It's burning my eyes. <laughs> and it's That's the la- that's the second party, right? I mean that, I guess no, that was what I, that's the first that's in both parties. Oh, that's right, it is. Oh my birth. god. Yeah. Slap it, Slappy decided <laughs> to projectile vomit green acid vom- is like fucking rad. Yeah, we're getting there. We're part. getting there. We'll get there. Oh yeah. that's that's okay. clown that's clown party too, yeah. Oh okay, yeah, uh, Slappy's uh, neutral range special where he just like <laughs> blast vomit out. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, uh, yeah, the burning my eyes thing just fucking hit me because it's like you know when someone drops a bowling de- ball downstairs in a cartoon and there's like a cat meow and like a sheep ba. Yeah, in, in addition to a bunch of like crashing noises, it's like my eyes. Oh God, my eyes! It's such a funny fucking arc line to hear in the midst of chaos. It is it is a truly yes. a truly real terrifying thing to hear? Uh, my fa- my personal favorite is it's in the wounds. Is my favorite. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's gotten in the wounds. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's really good. <laughs> yeah. So like this happens, they bomb, and the mom who is going to pay them thirty bucks to do this clown show tells them not each thirty not bucks. Each. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. They're splitting yeah. it. Splitting yeah. it. Yeah. Tells them that they bombed. Let's them know again. The true horror rears its face, which is bombing in front of an audience. The kids hate it. The mom hates it, and she tells them, "You need to practice more." And kicks them out of the of the thing. So, you know, their burgeoning egos and and uh, and confidence is completely shattered here. <laughs> I mean, their act did suck, uh, it but sucked. it wasn't entirely their fault because uh, Mary Ellen. Uh, fucked up their their pies and their uh squirt yes their squirty squirts yes we're led to believe that slappy was doing these things in the background right we're Mm -hmm, like it must have been slappy and we go home and there's a whole uh you know there's there's i think the macaroni scene occurs here that she's blaming the 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 sisters for screwing up the act slappy did it but we all know we know it by the end that mary ellen was doing this she slams mary ellen's face into a plate of macaroni that was wastefully (laughs) made for her yeah, and goes to bed and begins preparations for clown show two. By the way, <laughs> I love thinking about this as like uh, a, a show, like mm-hmm. thinking about this as a filmed experience. Yeah, I I love how the book cuts on Jillian just slamming the doll's face into some macaroni. That uh-huh. makes such a good cut. It is really like again, if you if you you could direct this very well from this, it, they, they, you can make a nice screenplay out of it, Kevin. You're right. Like there like there mm. are some very clear like scene endings. That are that hit out on a nice punch and stuff like that. Whereas I think in other books, typically the scenes are kind of free flowing and you get you just get the the cliffhangers, right? Yeah, there there's some good emphasis on interesting moments in this, and that's yeah. what I think does set it apart from the OG yeah. Goosebuds things. Like things are just in sharper focus now. Yeah, definitely. It feels a little bit more evolved in that way. Mm. Uh so yeah, then uh, Jillian has a scare with her lizard during this period too, I believe. This is uh, a long. That's a long fucking segment. The, yeah, the lizard a, scare part. It's a whole just thing. It's a, it's a fake out, right, to make the sisters seem like villainous in this in this regard, and that you think that they're behind this stuff. It's a whole fake yeah. out. They're they're preparing for clown show two, uh, and they're gonna go <laughs> every time. Sorry, just every time you say clown show two, <laughs> I picture a flyer that just has no color on it, it's just, just black and white. Says clown show a two. Xerox, <laughs> a Xerox of clown show two. Do do attend. Do attend. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck, I didn't see Clown Show 1 I hope we can follow what's going on <laughs> Oh man I love it So they go, <laughs> they go Oh I'm sorry Before they go to do Clown Show 2 
Yeah, they have to get. Oh yeah, up. we gotta we gotta go uh, hunt down Jimmy O James right. and learn some puppet they, with yes. sorcery because they're looking for a new puppet. <laughs> they want to get a new puppet, right? So they were like, "Oh, we'll go right. to Jimmy O James's house and we'll get did a second. Guys... Sorry, go ahead. No, did go ahead. you did you guys catch? how they took their bikes and they left the wealthy part of town. Kevin, for... <laughs> I wrote the note down that they literally cross over railroad tracks to the wrong side of the tracks. <laughs> well, yeah, it's the it's the Irish part of town, so yeah. it's definitely the lower income. <laughs> <laughs> they go to the Irish quarter where Jimmy and James lives. <laughs> Oh, they literally go there. They literally cross the tracks. A, 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 a dog. She has her bag of potatoes to keep the Irish from attacking yep. her. A fucking, a fucking dog attacks them after they cross the after they cross the tracks. Uh, which is, I love the roving packs of dogs that are constantly in these books. Oh yeah, but yeah, you're right. There were in um in a uh, uh, the haunted school. There were there were haunted uh, dogs, roving, packs, roving of dogs. packs of dogs. It's it's a, it's a thing. Uh, they find the house. They find his weirdo workshop, uh, which we can only assume is is Jimmy O James. He's living in a place filled with cockroaches and it's decaying and stuff like that. Uh, they find a, a realistic head of his own head, which is just there for some reason, for no reason, never brought back into the story. There's just a realistic Jimmy O James uh, doll head being made. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, they find a diary talking about the that the sorcerer who invented uh, Slappy has put his soul into Slappy's body. Some Slappy lore. Some finally. Slappy lore, yes. Some real Slappy lore finally revealed. So, so like, the sorcerer made toys that would uh, insult and, and hurt their owners. Mm -hmm. Like, he was just a petty dick of a sorcerer. <laughs> <laughs> and... Now he lives on as Slappy, I guess, mm. is the point of all this. Yep, yep. He's, he has immortalized himself as an eternal shithead inside of Slappy. <laughs> I like the I like the part where Slappy is made from coffin wood. That was fucking yeah, cool. Yeah, cool detail. We knew that we knew that already, right? I always thought that was part of the pre established. I can't remember, but I heard it again today, and I loved it. Yeah, yeah. Also, how does Jimmy O. James afford to live in a whole ass house on like a fucking? <laughs> ventriloquist yeah. salary with no right. roommates. The economy was so much better in the 90s. <laughs> like, if this book was written today, Jimmy O. James would be living with, like, eight other roommates. Right. And they would all have equally weird uh, part-time jobs. Yes. Such as ventriloquist. Yes, 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 yes. Uh, yeah. It, it's it's astounding. But he has he does have all those cockroach roommates, which I think we're having a Joe's apartment situation here is what was going on. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Jillian gets swarmed by cockroaches, and it says, like, she crouches down and swats at them. Yeah, what was that weird language for? What was that all about? <laughs> Is that what RL does when he sees cockroaches? He gets on their level and starts touching? <laughs> hmm. I wonder if he's ever even... No, he's seen a cockroach. He's seen a cockroach. Yeah, he's, he's lived in New York. Different. He has. He's 100% seen a oh, cockroach. Oh, yeah. For sure. I think he throws a goosebump book at him. He would, he would throw, like, um... Like an Animorphs book at them. He would throw a competitor's book ah, to kill a cockroach. I use, I use Percy Jackson to smite the bugs. <laughs> oh, yeah, so they, they find these these weird diaries, and they then an old man comes and tells them to leave, and they just decide to leave, and it's just a weird it's a weird a weird out for that. And they go back. But they uh, dummy lists. They don't have a dummy. And then it's just we, uh, hand waved over that for some reason Harrison was able to go to his uncle's house and find another ventriloquist dummy. Again, there's fucking ventriloquist dummies everywhere in these neighborhoods. I do not know what where this is happening. They, oh yeah, what, what was what was uh, what was the name of the dummy they got? Briefly? I can't even remember. Oh, uh, doesn't uh, it, doesn't, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't. It doesn't matter because they show up. I'm gonna call him Boppo. Show sure, Boppo. They, they pack up Boppo <laughs> and they pack up Mary Ellen to go to the show. Uh, and they, and at at, before this, they have uh, put Slappy into a suitcase and locked it. Mm. He's locked away, and yeah. and Jillian says we're not opening it, no matter what. Harrison tries to convince her multiple times. No, we're not doing it. They show up at Clown Show Two, not <laughs> determined not to do another Clown Show, but to do a ventriloquist act. It's Bapo's big day. Bapo's uh, big day. <laughs> Bapo's Bapo's coming out today. It's virgin performance. Yeah. <laughs> And they open up the case to bring, to pull out Boppo, <laughs> and there lies Slappy. And Slappy and Harrison says the little sh little wooden fingers just sticking out at him from the inside the case. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, that's right. And and Harrison says the show must go on. And the <laughs> and the showman that 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 Jillian is agrees we must do this. And they begin to do the show. And the 
this is where the best scene of the whole book unfolds. Uh, Chad, you wanted to talk about it. You were excited about this, so please. I, I, I really need someone to explain everything that happens in this scene to me, just to make sure I got it right, because right. I was I was desperately confused by the end of this book. I mean, maybe I... Well, now I'm second-guessing my understanding on it. I just kind of focused on the slime, but... <laughs> the the show is the show is going bad mm-hmm. slappy is slappy is breaking the pre-rehearsed lines i guess uh uh-huh, yeah. and starts demanding his bride uh slappy just stops like hiding slappy in this book is very easy to just be like i'll let you see my secret mm-hmm. and just starts barfing green pea slime yeah uh that's p e a not p <laughs> pea slime at <laughs> On all of the kids. Yes. Including j- hopping off of uh, Jillian's lap and just standing and just doing in what I assume was like a sprinkler. A kid, at least a couple kids fall and slip. It is like, this is actually a very gross scene. Like, think about that much. Like, kids just slide around like pigs and slime. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and as, they're, as, the, as the, may- the mayhem is unfolding, there's a great part where like, it is seen that two girls are sitting in the corner, curled, huddled up together, crying. Again, scenes to film. <laughs> scenes to film in a children's show would be the two girls cuddle, cuddled up in the corner crying about what's happening. There, There is a disgusting odor. I'm assuming yep. mm-hmm. that not described kids are just throwing up from the odor. <laughs> oh, no, they do say some are crying. I saw two boys bent over vomiting on the floor, <laughs> it says. And we get, it's burning my eyes again. It's burning my eyes. The kids are hit in the eyes by it. <laughs> Like a kid is blinded. <laughs> the, everything, the chaos is unfolding from this fr- slappy. But this is like this is like the end of Carrie, where Carrie just like doesn't care if you know well, she's just making her big play. And I'll defend Slappy's not caring. Is Slappy has not been none of the acts from the beginning of the book. Slappy does slap. Slappy's doing his shit at the beginning, and like you said, Slappy does slap. Slappy, <laughs> Slappy's shooting his shot from the beginning of this book. And then it, Jimmy O. James l- l- shuts him down, right? In the beginning of this book. And then all of the things, all the subversion that's happening, all the little pranks and stuff that are happening in between are not Slappy doing that. So he is not hiding and, pr- and trying to p- put one over. It's all Mary Ellen doing that, right? She's pulling mm-hmm. the pranks quietly. But then she wakes him up for this show. And Chad, as you're saying, he that's when he shoots his green group shot. And he's back. He's like, well, I'm I'm back. I'm not hiding it. He's out, like, proud about his evil dollness, right? Like, he's he's there. He's I am an, yeah. I am an evil doll, and he's letting it be known. Yeah, he's out of the briefcase. He's out of the briefcase. This is, he, he says, this is me, and starts quoting more things from The Greatest Showman as 20 years before it came out. <laughs> yeah. I, I've never seen it, but I'll believe it, Chad. And at some point, Mary Ellen is like, so we're getting married now, right, Slappy? <laughs> He's like, nah. Nah, I'm marrying this other girl. I'm marrying He's, Jillian. Nah, not this broke bitch. No, he <laughs> says. And Jillian's like, whoa, whoa, what? Whoa, 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 I'm a minor? Leave me alone? <laughs> I was also like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> yeah, what's more problematic? Slappy saying, I'm going to marry this child or then saying, you'll be my slave forever? Both. They're both are. <sighs> and yet, he keeps getting away with it. <laughs> <laughs> To this day, Slappy is still not canceled. He's doing better than he ever was. He's had two movies. He's had his own series. Yep. Get him out of here. So the the chaos is unfolding. Uh, Then Mary Ellen has revealed herself as an evil doll as well. Uh, She explains why she did all of the evil things to Jillian. She goes through, you've always picked on me. You've always hated me. You smashed my head into macaroni. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. That was was one of her first things to get out of her frustrations. Mary Ellen has the pride of an Italian mobster. It's all about respect with her. You know what I mean? (laughs) Well, there is like a revenge subplot in the book. Like there's a revenge Mm -hmm. theme going on where like, uh, Jillian is obsessed with getting her revenge yes. she, on. She pulled a the, prank on Harrison, made yep. him eat mud, and she's waiting for the revenge from that still. Yeah. Uh, Harrison, I guess, just doesn't give a shit. Harrison, which is... Harrison's a normal human, and he's like, well, you were mean to me, but I'm choosing to forgive that and be literally the bigger and more and morally the bigger person. Very big. Very, Very big. big. I just don't... I just. I just still don't understand... Mary Ellen going like after Mary Ellen's been negged by Slappy this entire book. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I just want to call from the very beginning. Slappy is like Mary Ellen's ugly. 
Groves. This is very pickup artist guide, right? Slappy is basically like establishing Kino mm-hmm. uh, and uh, making physical contact. I'm trying to remember other bad terms from that stupid book. Uh, and like, so Slappy sucks mm-hmm. and is not good, but Mary Ellen is willing to like outright go, she's not your bride, I am. Right. Like, marry, marry me. What, why? I don't, yeah, I don't, there, there's no clear reason why she wants to be right. <laughs> she already said she doesn't like Slappy because he's, I think he does, she said something about him being lazy or, I don't know, something like that. She was talking, mm. she was talking shit on him before they're even married. Well, a lot of honeymooners, like, level yes, shit sure, going exactly, on here. exactly. Do you, ever, do you ever read that comic strip, The Lockhorns? Yes. Do you ever read that in your newspaper where it's just, like, two miserable people, and you're just, as a kid, I'm reading, going, get a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> you can you can end <laughs> this. Break up. You can end you have no. Ki- you seemingly have no kids. Separate. Like, be happy. And instead, this is what Mary Ellen is just running face first into, like, well, this is what I'm going to do with the rest of my life now. Right. I mean, we can't all be the Zitz family. Like, we can't all just... <laughs> figure shit out like they did uh, foxtrot really had not yeah i don't we're not all foxtrots yeah. uh so they yeah the chaos is unfolding there's a, different people wanting to marry different people again like this this uh jillian gets <laughs> jillian's caught up in this love triangle that she should not be a part of in any way and any just should not be a part of it they are fighting over her and that's when slappy decides he's going to murder mary ellen by taking her into the wood shop uh, and <laughs> sawing her in half, which he does in front of all the children who are crying and their <laughs> eyes are burning and vomiting. Was there, is there just, there's like no parents. Like there's no. just no parents during this entire party. No, they all dropped their kids off and then went to go get drunk across the <laughs> they street. They did. With oh, each you, other. Have, yes. you, have a, you have a workbench with saws plugged in next room over. <laughs> Sounds great. I'll see you later. Yep. <laughs> Dude, it's fucking great. I think this scene, again, if you were directing this, this is uh, in Kill Bill after she plucks out the sure. eye and it turns to color and there's just people writhing everywhere and being like, oh, oh. <laughs> that is what's happening. There's children everywhere writhing in green goo and the the, the, the dolls murder each other. Uh, Slappy saws uh, Mary Ellen in half and before he can finish her off, she grabs him and sucks him into the saw as well. And he is sawed in half, and both of their bodies split in two, fall to the ground. Jillian walks up to Slappy's body, where the hand does one last grasp up in the gooey <laughs> viscera and sawdusty viscera of the mayhem, and then falls down. And the parents come in, and you know what the hell just happened down here? Look at this mess. Some bad clowning happened. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then we do a time skip, and mm-hmm. this is the weirdest part of the book for me. Yeah, this ending is something. We do a time skip, and I guess Harrison and Jillian and the twins are hanging out watching TV, and Harrison's reading from Jimmy O. James's diary. Yep. And he's like, apparently, Slappy, if his original body is destroyed, he'll just possess something else, which makes sense, like, why Jimmy O. James threw the body away instead of, like, burning it or putting it into a wood chipper or, or whatever. Uh, and, and also, I thought this had been established in previous books already, including the one of them when Slappy's destroyed. I thought like a green slug crawled out. Yeah, you oh. might be right. You might be right. Did I, I just imagine that? I thought for sure that was part that of the like. That seems right, but I'm not. I, he has he has a, a Yurk form or a Star uh, Trek TNG yes. alien race. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, Jillian's like very interesting. And then the twins look back at jillian and smile and then she just vomits green goo on them yeah like that okay so she's yes. apparently possessed right so she's yeah. been, she has been possessed by this fine okay but we have these moments where she's acting normal she's narrating to us it's from her mm-hmm. perspective she's acting uh-huh. normal we get the i guess a fake out of that maybe we think this twin sisters have been mm-hmm. possessed i i yeah, or that Mary Ellen is is now in them, which also would be a scary idea. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, but maybe that is what. Oh, that's a great point, Chad. I hadn't thought about that. That maybe they're also possessed. So maybe it's a dual well, possess. We, a dual possession. I want to clarify again. We get zero context of why Mary Ellen's alive. Right? We don't know if it's the same magic. Nothing. We have zero idea. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. So th- this last chapter, everything you just described happens in like two pages. Mm-hmm. I have never felt RL racing for the door. <laughs> 
I got a deadline at five o'clock more than this last chapter of, uh, I don't know, maybe it's the twins, uh, it's me. Uh -huh. So canonically, is Slappy a preteen clown core goth girl now? Oh, that That's sick. I love that, Kevin. That's so much more interesting. <laughs> that's cool. But we don't get any, we don't get the details. Maybe we find out in Son of Slappy. Maybe. Maybe. What if... What if Crazy Pitch, Jillian, now lives her life as a slappy vessel, mm -hmm. right? Uh, goes through high school, goes to college, right? gets married, <laughs> has a full-on full, full -on life. A full, beautiful, a young, rich life. Mm -hmm. A full, I'm, beautiful, I'm, rich life. I'm picturing yeah. all of these as, like, Polaroid photos where she's vomiting green slime in each of them. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, that's what I was about to say, Kevin, is like, I think she starts like selling Lula Row on Facebook. And <laughs> and so all of her pictures of her like vomiting green slime over like, look how it comes right out of these tights. Okay. Uh-huh. And then and then she gets settles down mm. with a nice boy named named Ron. Mm -hmm. And they have a kid, and that is the child of slapping. Okay. Could be a, a human, a human boy hybrid that also probably has some like soul uh, ventriloquist in the them. missing link to the next stage of human evolution. <laughs> yes, yes, a homunculus. I'm trying to think of like what a half slappy would have the powers of. Like, <laughs> he can hit people and call people slaves. <laughs> <He> can... <laughs> I feel like it'd be kind of watered down from that. Like, <laughs> like you'd only be kind of problematic. He can snap at them and call them my part-time employee. That's all he can oh, do. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> he has like a hole. He has a weird hole in his back. The doctors are really concerned about, but they decide to just ignore. And like, if you really force your arm in there, you can get it in there, but you can't do much. Right. Oh, my God. I, I don't know why this made me think of this but how fucked up would it be if your belly button was on your back oh, oh God, dude, i do not like that oh. i do not like that. Oh. i have begrudgingly become okay with the fact that there's a hole in my stomach now i think about <laughs> it on my back i can't even fathom that i know right when i was a kid i was terrified all the time of my belly button just coming undone mm -hmm. that's in loose knot it's not that tight a of a doctor knot. just like ties as if i'm a misunderstanding of it a doctor just cuts your umbilical cord yeah and then decides to just tie like a sheep shank loop <laughs> or whatever, or a little bow, and like there you go, snap, just like tying a rubber band. What the fuck? And trust biology to take care of the rest. Get real. They should put like a sealant on that. They should put like a little like I don't know, like a little gem over there. Let you have your belly button cover. <laughs> a little Steven Universe stopper. A little Steven Universe stone. That is very satisfying. That his belly button is secure for me. I don't have to worry. About <laughs> or a butt plug. <laughs> Sure, sure. You know when like an electrical outlet where you put those things so a child can't like put anything in there, like a little plastic thing. I just want that for my belly. Button. You want a butt plug? You're looking for a butt, a butt, a, a front butt plug. Yeah, I'm looking for a seal. I'm looking for a, a high seal. No one, no matrix listening device yep. can worm in there. Uh huh. Nothing. Uh huh. Fair. I think that's oh absolutely my God. fair. I do want to read from the trivia section of the Bride of the Living Dummy fandoms page. Please, uh, please. There's, there's some changes that were made. So the classic Goosebumps reprint changes a few details from the story. So we read the more updated uh, version yeah. of this. Notably, Slappy's design is described to closer resemble his movie redesign. So they went, Boom. they went with that. Uh, the scene where Slappy headbutts Jillian in the face. I don't remember that. No. And calling it a love tap was removed. So that was removed entirely. We definitely read the updated one. Additionally, the... <laughs> yeah, because that's pretty... I, I think we would... Have, well, he hit other kids in the old... When the, when the originals, we read them where he, he pushed a kid down some stairs, if I remember correctly. Slappy hits kids. Yeah. Slappy right. hits kids all the time. Uh, yeah. Additionally, the prior sequence where Slappy beats on Mary Ellen is reduced, removing multiple instances <laughs> of Slappy kicking Jesus and insulting Christ. her. Slappy knocking her out is changed to him performing some sort of spell to put her to sleep. I did. Oh, is that yes. what that was? I, okay. okay, so he must have knocked her out physically. I was so confused at that. I was like, what did he do? It was not. He just... I, I, yeah, there's a chapter. I forgot to bring that up. I'm glad. Like, there was, a, it was like a, because it was a nothing fake out, right? It was like mm -hmm. Slappy. And, and Mary Ellen are fighting and Slappy just it described as moves his hand as if turning off a switch yes. and Mary Ellen goes limp. There's no explanation so for what I that is. I read it as, oh, it's a spell, like that's a hand incantation. Yes. And then I was like, maybe he turned off something and like he actually literally hit a switch. It was very unclear. It was very unclear. And I think the reason why is it was a it was a retro change or, you know, a retrofit. 
probably like a Punch and Judy reference in the first one or something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Puppets. Yep. Yeah, and like I could see like you know he had them hitting each other. I understand why now like a current publisher would want to remove that, but I think you're right, Kevin. It's like a it's like a Punch and Judy thing. Like we're with yeah. this, this is stuff that you know we've seen that before. I definitely have been reading it more as the the even in this version the honeymooners like oh they're yeah. they're married and they're already fighting. Yeah, I'm like a, but yeah. I mean the, that was the vibe I was getting. I mean, you could like play it up and have them like do karate to each other or something <laughs> like that. I don't think that would read as domestic abuse if you still I, wanted them I, to fight. I'd also be down with them doing just fucking magic shit at each other. Or what if Mary Ellen starts like barfing a different color slime? Maybe hers is blue. Oh, and they have a beam, a slime beam off. And oh, they, and yeah. yeah they, have a, they, have a, they have a Gokhan versus like Cell Kamehameha. <laughs> And then the ghost of uh, what was his name, like Woody, whatever his name yep, was, Mister Wood, Wood Mister Wood, yep, appears behind Slap, and he's like, "I believe in you, Slappy. You could do it. Take my energy." And then he, the beam overrides, it Mary overrides Ellen. hers and gets in her eyes, and she explodes. <laughs> <laughs> in my eyes, it's burning my eyes. <laughs> it's burning my eyes. Why? Why do I have dull nerves? Why? Oh, oh my god, I was doing this to the children the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Is this what it feels like? Oh no. Uh. I think that's a goosebumps. What a weird book. One weird book. Well, yeah, was... yeah. It was it was weird. Um, I don't know if I felt like the lo- the new millennia was represented. Like, <laughs> to be in goosebumps no, 2000. no. I do not feel like we had passed uh, Y2K yet when I read this. Honestly, I-, I do feel in general positive about series 2000. Yeah, uh, I still have hope. Sure, I still have hope. I don't think it's all going to be like slam dunks, like Cry of the Cat. Uh, mm-hmm. Which, you know, we acknowledge that, that had its problems when we read it as well. But yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I like these more like scene and moment based uh, chapters that we're getting here. Me too. Uh, and not, it's it, not as fake out based. There were some plenty of fake outs, but there were it was not it didn't feel as based around that. Right. Yeah. It felt like we it felt like it stopped at natural progressions of the story. There were only three or four pranks probably at most. Right. Um, right. And mm. they were at least were centered around Slappy mm-hmm. and not a... A dog jumped out of the shadows. <laughs> I am worried about the next one because it's called Creature Teacher. So he definitely came up with this title because he thought it would be fun to play off of cre- uh, Creature <laughs> Feature. Like he definitely was doing yep. that. So not not feeling enthused about the next one just just right now. I'm feeling a little nervous. Like I I, I picture RL in front of a whiteboard with the words creature and feature on them. And he's like frantically drawing lines being like, what else could this be? <laughs> creature <laughs> peach. <Peach-er? laughs> is it a, is it a killer fruit? <laughs> <laughs> he's like pouring another cup of coffee. It's 3 AM. And then he's like, wait, kids have teachers. <laughs> I've got it. You've done it again. Now to write the book. Send it to my ghostwriter. I mean, my editor. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit. Uh, oh i did want to say real quick another little note from the thing it is said in this that this is the first book in the living dummy saga to reveal the origin of slappy which has remained consistent throughout the majority of the saga has it yep hmm. apparently well, this has been a bump I, we bumped that's been a bump <laughs> we bumped we bumped it Thank you for joining us as we as we dip our toes into the year two thousand. The year two thousand. We'll uh, I think we'll keep going through this one. We might hop around to some Fear Street and other stuff, but I think I think we're we're aligned in this. You know, this being our new new franchise. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, we definitely have to. I, we're we're in two thousand now. That's what we're going to go through. And I, I'd like to, you know, I'd like to push through a couple of them to yeah, see. Me too. I want to see what kind of quality we're dealing with here. You know, like it was was yeah. Cry the Cat an outlier or was it? Or was it a, a sign of things to come? And and I think I think comparing reading these as having to push is um <laughs> you know it feels right. Mm-hmm. For these yeah. books. Mm-hmm. A, a big a big mighty push through these. Yeah, um, we're birthing a podcast. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. If you want to check out more stuff, if you haven't listened to all episodes, we're all up on all of the streaming services. Uh, and you can get access to bonus episodes. We do Camp Goose Buds every month uh, where we get to hang around the digital campfire and share what's going on in our lives and crack some jokes. And it's even less structured than these normal episodes. If you can believe that. Uh, if you can, I know, right? If you like the first 15 minutes of this show, you're going to love <laughs> that show. Camp Goose Buds. 
Uh, if you want to watch that, or if you want to listen to that, I guess you could just stare at the the QuickTime file playing on your screen. Yeah. Uh, you can go to patreon.com. Sorry, Chad, the, the quick the QuickTime quick time file, like from 19, 1993. <laughs> Do you guys not still have QuickTime? Do you guys not still play everything on QuickTime? Chad, we use Real Player, okay? Yeah. Oh, uh, Real Player always broke for me. I never used I know, that it was one. terrible. It was absolutely atrocious. I used Flash Microwave Player in every video yes. they loaded it like a cartridge. Yes. I use that Windows Media Player, baby. Get that visualizer. <laughs> Please let us know if you listen to us on a visualizer what our waveforms look like <laughs> as... Yeah, do you see any cool like animals or anything in the forms? Let us know. Please. Uh, and not only going to Patreon, can you help support the show, get access to our Discord, you get to vote on what we're reading next, a bunch of other cool stuff. Uh, boys, what else What else should, should everyone check out? Got anything going on? Got any cool things you want to plug? Um... I mean, uh, I've I've seen a few uh, people in the Goosebuds community move over to my Patreon, which is always very fun. Uh, oh well, yeah. What you want? You want to talk about uh, if you want to support Kevin? Only Kevin and not all three of us. <laughs> no, yeah. we will not. None, none of us will. Uh, Chad, you and I will not promote anything during this. It's only Kevin promotion. Whoa, I mean, you guys, <laughs> I, we could all get in on this. I'm, I'm no, just no, saying, I'm serious. Chad I think you said something be... to promote. And I'm like, well, yeah. I haven't said the words givekevinmoney.com in a while. It's a great uh, website, and I think you deserve to be the one who gets to promote because of that website. It's a brilliant thank idea. Thank you. I mean, we can all promote things. It's uh, there's some there's some hip things happening on the continue uh, Patreon as well. Oh yeah, there's some changes coming. Yeah, but uh, I've got a whole secret podcast, uh, like a year's worth of a secret podcast on uh, my Patreon. It's called Heart Cannon. I interview my friends on it uh, about art they like, and it's really good. Paul's on there for two episodes. Uh, Chad's coming in season two. Um, yeah, yeah, and um, I, I make video games every month. There's a there's something to download uh, and play, and um, yeah, there's a there's a lot of me on that Patreon. <laughs> if so. you love Kevin, you're gonna love this Patreon. Yeah, if you want to give me a dollar, you can watch me play my video games in a YouTube channel where I talk about them. Um, that's also a secret only known to my p- Patreon patrons. So. I don't know if you. I don't. No pressure. I, like support Goosebuds, obviously. But like, if you want to <laughs> give KevinMoney dot com <laughs> or Patreon dot com slash Goosebuds. Yeah, um, I'm gonna say I say support some some Goosebuds. If you want to check out uh, p- Continue, if you don't follow that, uh, it's a show I do as well weekly where we play video games, and we have a Patreon as well. And you can head over there, and we have uh, some new series coming out if you like podcasty type stuff. So yeah, check if it you out. Miss- if you missed a certain long form continue thing, indeed, you Questing. should look Also, I geeked out watching you three boys play through Def Jam uh, Vendetta. What that was a great episode! What yeah. an incredible game! I love that game, and seeing you guys also quickly discover how great that game is. Except you got to use heavy attacks to knock people out. I know we forgot. Uh, we forgot. <laughs> it's really fun. Really great episode. I, I'd say, like, uh, I, mean, I have to plug, like, hey, if this is coming out in October, uh, the same month as Star Trek Prodigy oh, comes yeah. out uh, on Paramount Plus, a service you probably don't have yet. So <laughs> check it out. Uh, there's a there, there's a uh, a brief uh, trial period, I believe. There's a um, brief trial period. Yeah, yeah, I believe I signed up for Paramount Plus to watch something. So uh, I think we used it. I think we actually used it to watch an episode of uh, of uh, It's Lit Your Shorts. Is oh yeah, we did do that. <laughs> oh, that's that. I was like, why do I already have an account for this? Oh, that's right. we watched yeah. It's Lit Your Shorts. That's what it was. Yeah. So there's uh, a there's a trial period if you want to watch uh, Chad's show for a little bit. Yeah. There's listen. Those episodes are gonna be really cool. Uh, I would encourage you to check it out. It's even though it's being maybe marketed as a Star Trek for kids, I think it is an all ages show. It'll encapsulate the wonders of Star Trek, and it's animated. A beautiful four quadrant show by your friend Chad. <laughs> wow, four quadrants. That's the most. <laughs> think of value. <laughs> Kevin, what have I told you? There's a fifth, ca- fifth quadrant. Fifth quadrant. <laughs> fifth quadrant does sound vaguely Star Trekky. Fifth, fifth quadrant is the is the mole people who live under the earth. Yeah, I was gonna That's say this is like a this is like a fifth element movie that we're talking about here. <laughs> the untapped fifth the quadrant. The untapped fifth quadrant. Uh, do we want to say goodbye by reading some reviews of our podcast? That's an amazing idea, Kevin. Sure. Yes, if you want to also support the show, uh, you can leave us a review on iTunes or other services like Stitcher. But uh, we mostly check iTunes. We have some hot new reviews from you all, uh, Kevin. You wanna you want you want to take it? 
Yeah. This review by Catastrophic, entitled 90s Kid Approved, five stars, Mm, uh, goes a little something like this. As a 90s kid who loved but was also scared of Goosebumps, this podcast delivers. I'd love to hear episodes reviewing Goosebumps shows as well as the Goosebumps video games. Uh, console and PC, not mobile. I, I like don't you dare play, Do not don't you play, dare the play mobile a mobile game, game on this show. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's like a DOS um, uh, Goosebumps game that I've been meaning to like figure out how to run on my computer yeah we need to, uh, we need to do some we need to do some research and figure out how, how best I, to do I that. still have the disc of the dreamworks live action one escape from horror land uh that i would love to play with you boys absolutely sometime. yeah and there's one on uh switch i think too uh that's yeah. semi, that's like uh cu- like current with the movies or something like that mm-hmm. um yeah i'd love to do more game related stuff and i i or sorry we haven't done a goosebumps a show episode with me yet I don't think. oh we should get on that then really yeah that's crazy yeah i don't think well, we've done we that might, we're probably running out of them i did notice that this episode <laughs> was one of the last was actually one of the tv show episodes this and cry the cat were the only goosebumps 2000 okay uh, Let, we can, we let's can... get the dregs baby let's get them yeah. dregs. <laughs> <laughs> i uh well, you want to read the next I, one yeah i've got one here if it's from uh m kupka and it mm. says the coolest thing I, I guess that's Michael Kupka. Michael Kupka. <laughs> the coolest thing I do is listen to this podcast. I cannot tell a lie. I have been listening to these men discuss children's horror books for as long as I can remember. It Aww. has become an essential part of who I am. My favorite thing to do is lis- is to listen to Goosebuds, and my second favorite thing to do is to tell people that I listen to Goosebuds. M Aww, Kupka, you're cool. living your truth. I love it. M Kupka, that was very nice. Thank you. Thank you. I, I hope that's the first thing you throw out at someone. And then you have to go like explain the entire thing. And you're like, I th- okay, but also we're just sitting next to each other on the train. I listen to Goosebuds. Also, my name is Michael. Hello. I, I, I gotta say, since uh since I became a host on the show, my parents have been throwing that out a lot that uh, our son is on a podcast that reviews yeah! Goosebumps. Yeah. I don't know why, but it's something like my aunts and uncles can comprehend. It, no, I love it. Yes. Kevin, do your family does your family listen to this podcast? No. No, I don't know. Of all the things that I make on the internet, this is the easiest to explain to people. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. That's that's real. Like it's real. It's it, they people can wrap their heads around it. Oh, okay. I know those books are real, a thing that exists, and you can <laughs> and you can read them. And and I understand what you reading them is, and I understand you talking about them. So I can comprehend this project. Yeah, this is the number one boomer comprehended podcast. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh no. no i guess i guess i'll take it not listened to but like understood, understood. <laughs> <laughs> uh <laughs> chad why don't you why don't you read this last one bring us home sure i have one from a variable a uh, sinfony sinfony uh Ooh. saying long time listener five stars and they say been here since episode one Originally from Dom's previous podcast, Fantasy Fiction, and a fan of Continue Show, oh, yeah. Goosebuds is a great podcast about the prolific franchise that is Goosebumps. While initially reminiscent about the series, listen as they slowly find out why it's more aimed towards kids, talking about kids' attire on pages on end, and how absolute sour kids are to one another. <laughs> Truly words of a true prophet that is really love style. Aww. <laughs> I hope that's his real name. And did some some clever stuff with the parentheticals uh, to R.L. Stein. Lately, it has been come more so just a following the lives of three great gentlemen, and I am absolutely Aww. for it. Oh, that's great. As someone who enjoys listening to tangents and brain vomit, I give this a well-timed 9-11 jokes out of 10. <laughs> we certainly had the brain review. vomit for you this episode. <laughs> yes, yeah, we did. God. Yes, we did. There must be like a portal in Slappy's belly, right? Like some sort of void to generate that much slime. Yeah, he wasn't oh. carrying that load around inside of him. <laughs> There's got to be an episode where they turn Slappy inside out and he floods the world with vomit. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about all the time we have for him. <laughs> <laughs> Till next time, guys. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.
Hey, Goosebuds is brought to you by Patreon supporters like you. We'd like to read from our book of names. <laughs> First up, Stefan Jive Turkey Kuwabara. Hollis Hornbeak. Cameron Murphy Audio. Michael McDowell. David Cron. Josh Robertson. Mickey C. Nathan Dolezal. Clayton C. Mike Lanteri. Buddy Morrill. Alicade. Mel Dipson. Jim Greaves. Zang Keith. Afshin. Danky McStanky. Dango Twists. Ryan Wells. Zentacles. Stealth Bates. Low Belly Hate Me. <laughs> Joseph Miranda. Patrick Reynolds. Scott Colaby. Robert Moon. Jason Crooker. John Keaty. Clay Castle. Miguel Pardo. Christina Doling. Third, Sergio. Calf. Matthew More Paranoia Shop. Sniggy. Reinfected. Maddie. Ishak Arafin. Gregory D. Warren. Helen Saylor. Cody Redfield. Bradford Coulter. Aiden Alexander Dice. Jar Jar Slinks. Justin Wagman. Chosen One. Card Boardwalk. Le- Levi Than. I'll never get it right. <laughs> I always want to say Leviathan. It's going to... We'll try. We'll try, but it's going to keep happening. I'm sorry, Levi Than. Up and Champ. Jonas Eggman. Alicia Grafe. Mole Oyster. Carl. Hey, Broccoli, pause for a second. I got to get something off my chest. I think I love Paul. Aw, thanks, Broccoli. I love you too. <laughs> The John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation. Elusive Koala. Yanni Markovina. Trent Davis. Uh, Jonas Blotterman. Joe. Brooke X. Beezus Christ. Christian Van Skyver. Drew Applegate. Jeremy Lowe. Brian Hobgood. Zach Connor. Patreon underscore donator comma yo. Joe Spooky Digital Ghost Tierney. Paul Grasso. Trans rights. Tom Whittem. Taylor Dierks. Joe, I'm not tired. I always look like this, Scott. Andrew Jadsack is wondering if Zentacles are just chill cephalopod <laughs> arms. Love the dialogue. Yeah. Yeah, I like this discourse that's going on in the let's, book of names. Let's keep this up. Let's talk more <laughs> among names. Yeah, misconnections. Who's got something to say about Lord Cornwallis? <laughs> Or Trendy Moron. Or Elizabeth Steedweg. Could you perhaps say something about Cardamom Burke and Bino? <laughs> Perchance a thought for Murphy P. <laughs> spare spare a, a dollop of wisdom for Vincent Modica. A missive for Luke Noodles. I don't know what I'd say to Hugh Bolt. <laughs> uh, uh, do you like me yes or no letter sent to Zambambino? <laughs> now this one from Tevin Ticklebean is your new best friend. <laughs> That's for everybody. I'm going to break it. Good goods. Yeah, we, did, we got to stop at some point. <laughs> S-N-E-S Chalmers. Thank you. Sean Minogue. Wormtown Glenn. Wiggle it. John Pigeon Hat Barber. Chip Handsome. Matt McKellen. Nathan Remick. Divaldi. Alex Moon, the robotic dog. Reed Stubendick. Sarah Kemp. Tanya Turtle. Chili Dish Gambino. Joey Evans. Brett. Carewise Gamgee. Uncle Cool Brother. Cameron Hansen. Adam, you goofed, but don't be so hard on yourself. One Jalapeno. Muscles Bear. General Lee Depressing. Dom's Sexy Ghost, a.k.a. Captain Sick. Oh, that's a name I haven't heard in a long time. <laughs> Love Keith that one. Halcrow. Chris Tranquil Sleepwear Erection. <laughs> Nelson. Beautiful. Hey, nothing bad's uh, happening. I love it. Timothy Misadalakis. Clay McCarty. Yeah, yeah. Ben Bohan. Matthew Stevens. Parker Lee. Ham underscore boat. More like Ken Burns' Pee with Mom War documentary. Am I right, fellas? Wow. What? <laughs> wow. What? Wow. What? what? It's a Vietnam it's a Vietnam war pun, I believe. <laughs> and, uh, that was brave and stunning. Oh wait. Oh wow. Oh man. I'm gonna be thinking about that for a while. Hey, hey dude. Hey man. My dad was in Vietnam. He had a desk job. He saw some shit. <laughs> I don't know that I'll ever look at that war the same. Dan. <laughs> Chris Pittman is a bone wizard? <laughs> <laughs> Boss Garrison. Hey, Eric, it's going to be all right. You're doing a great job. You really are, Eric. Good job, mm-hmm. Eric. Good job, Eric. Raymond Hernandez. Flemily. The Crow fans. Matthew Sutton. When dragons rule. <laughs> we need to make that into a song. Patrick Murphy. Jeffrey Owen Cahey. Jonas Evan Volson. Calamity Carl. Germ Juice. Lee Wood. Kelsey Kinnaman. 
Nick Johnson, Russell Kastberg, Xavier Jimenez, Brandon Arifin, Liam Neeson's Doe, Chris Boutrakis, Scotty Pippen, Stephen Day, Streak, Meet Virginia, Dungeon Kappa, Ryan Carroll, Jeremy Bowser, MC Hamster, Zach Ware, Limp Duck, <laughs> <laughs> Megan McCormick Mason, Alan G. Jussum, Tobias Clark, Michael Kupka, Julian Lamendia, Adam Muth, Ninja Breadman, Hoodleman, Andre Villanueva, Got Little Old Moi Pretty Freaked, Dr. Chocula, Jimmy Soul, Peanutburg Level 69, Moon Juice, Estamena Lord of Paul's Pants, The Davy Boy, Kenny M, Dr. Diarrhea, <laughs> SSJ Trogdor, I love SSJ Trogdor, someone write something <laughs> to, to Trogdor, Kieran McNamara, Diet Soda, Quigley Jones, Skellafella, Jackie Ledoux, Coleman Laguza, Lamb, I just saw your movie. <laughs> Good work, Lamb. <laughs> Mike Spaghetti Jones. Just had your food. Good job, Mike Spaghetti Jones. <laughs> A pair of Scots. Levi Kidder. Redemption. Davy. Sorry. Davy Gray. David. <laughs> Yeah, Davy Gray. <laughs> That's David Gray. <laughs> Bryce Diori. Matthew Bertato. I am Cornholio. I need TP for my bunghole. I need TP for my carb son. <laughs> Chris. Luke Human Z Allen. David Lynch Triple X. Brendan Fraser 666. What a combo. Some of Chad's bird friends. Nicholas Maloney. Midwest Indigo 13. Wagmar Wigmere. Nice. Dakota Kemp. Eric Horwitz. Tiffany Lee. This is good. Dr. Egg Drop Soup Man. I'm glad you got that. You needed to have that. Thomas Chance. How do we think we say this? Thomas Chance Cease? Chances. Chances? Thomas Chances? Chance. Yeah. Thomas, Thomas, let us know we're saying it wrong. Let us know. You can write it in here. That'll be a message to us. (laughs) Lucretia McEvil. Ooh. Elm Realm. Ooh. Mutant Astronaut. Soggy Newspapers. Alec Johnson. Henry Torbert. Hannah Jaegerbush. Kiwi of Fleur. So fun. Be Jarndeer. Jarndeer. Serial Killer X. The Skotag. Adam Knapp. Kukenti. Joe Melnick. Burger's Wonderful World. Official. <laughs> Logan Derby. Brad Schmelzer. Benjamin Luther. And we're uh, welcoming some new patrons to the Book of Names. Welcome... Edgar's Crassus. And welcome new patron Dennis Wright. I, I welcome you, but you'll probably not accept it, milk punk. <laughs> <laughs> welcome Skulletorin. Oh, you know what would go well with milk punk? Is welcome new patron Mr. Muffin. We got a new friend for Davy Gravy. It's Mandy Nasty. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to welcome Llama Lad. Oh my god, I love these names. Welcome, my new friend, Gustavo. And welcome, Mr. Misfire. I hope your pledge was not a misfire and you will be hanging out for a while. (laughs) You're stuck in the book forever. You're all stuck in the book forever. We're all stuck here forever together. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for joining. Thanks for joining. (laughs)